Welcome to this lesson on the CPU's deployment tool. In our previous lesson, we talked about the essence of deployment, the types and methods of deployment, and the tools that can be used for deploying checkpoint software. In this lesson, we will focus on the CPU's tool. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to describe when CPUs should be used, describe the prerequisites for deploying with CPUs, Describe the process of deploying with CPUs. Use CPUs to perform common use cases of deployment. And you will be able to perform basic troubleshooting in the CPU's deployment process. So, when should we use CPUs? CPUs should be executed within a single Gaia checkpoint machine when you wish to upgrade it to a higher version, install a hotfix or a jumbo hotfix, and when you wish to downgrade a machine to a lower version. In terms of prerequisites, it is advised to always use the latest CPU's deployment agent, which can be found in SK92449. This is relevant to offline installations. Additionally, the deployment should be performed on a Gaia OS machine, and you should make sure you have a valid license and contract before you perform the deployment. In case of online deployment, you need to verify connectivity to the checkpoint cloud. Finally, you need to ensure you have enough free disk space before you import the CPU's package. The free disk space on the var log partition in Gaia OS should be at least twice the size of the package you wish to import for installation. Let's go over the CPU's deployment process in high level before we get into a common use scenario. To begin, we first need to update CPUs to its latest deployment agent. Next, we choose the package we'd like to install. We retrieve the package to the machine, and finally, we install it. As simple as that. Now let's focus on the following scenario. Before we begin, you should note that there are two ways of using CPUs. Via Web UI, or through the Gaia Klish command line. In this case, for the ease of user experience, let's perform the upgrade using the CPU's web UI. David, a security admin, would like to upgrade a single machine to a higher version, followed by installation of a Jumbo hotfix. He will be doing this through an online deployment. To start, David logs into the machine's web UI. The machine overview page displays general information. Next, he clicks the software update link to reach the CPU's page. The status now field displays all the information regarding the deployment agent's build, the machine version and take, and when the last update was performed. David needs to make sure he's using the latest CPU's deployment agent. Therefore, he clicks the Check for Updates button to see whether new software updates are available in the Checkpoint Download Center. Accordingly, he updates the agent. Next, he examines the package's window pane. Since he is looking to upgrade to a major version, he selects the major version he would like to upgrade to. To proceed, he right-clicks on the selected version. Next, he chooses Verify in order to check whether this package would be compatible with this machine. Once the verification process is completed, he can download the package. Once downloaded, David can choose the type of deployment by right-clicking the package. In this case, he chooses Upgrade, which initiates the installation. Upgrading to a new major version is performed on a new hard disk partition. The old partition is converted into a Gaia snapshot. Note that in case of a failure, CPUs will perform an auto rollback to the machine's state prior to the upgrade. After a successful upgrade and reboot, David logs into the machine again. The status bar indicates that the machine is now upgraded to the major version of choice. This completes the first part of our upgrade, upgrading to a major version. 
Now for the second part of the upgrade, deploying the latest suitable Jumbo hotfix. For the sake of this scenario, David will perform the deployment using the offline installation process. We can find the latest package in the Checkpoint Support Center, where we search for the relevant Jumbo hotfix for our major version. Once the package is retrieved, we need to import it to the target machine. After importing the package, David changes the package view pane to all to display the downloaded Jumbo hotfix package. Now, he verifies the package to make sure the installation is allowed. After a successful verification, he installs the package. And this covers the upgrading to a Jumbo hotfix. In this final section of the lesson, we will discuss how to troubleshoot issues that arise during CPU's deployment. We need to be able to identify CPU's issues and their causes and review and analyze CPU's logs. When you encounter a yellow banner in the web UI during your deployment process, it's indicator of an issue. For instance, this banner, which indicates a connectivity issue to the Checkpoint Cloud. This can happen if no proxy or DNS is defined, or when there is no valid license. Another issue that can arise during deployment is an installation failure. To tackle this, you need to open the relevant log files and search for the root cause. The logs can be found in the OPT CPINS log directory. There are two relevant logs, which can be used to investigate such issues. The deployment agent log and the DA Actions XML. The DA Actions XML log file lists the actions performed on packages. Each action in the list specifies the following data. The CPU's action ID, the type of action such as install or upgrade, the package file in question, the interface where the user ran the action source, the start time, the completion time, and the completion status. If the completion status is failure, you may want to start investigating from there. The deployment agent log file is the CPU's log file. It lists the full debug information on the actions performed by CPUs. You can take the relevant action ID from the DA Actions XML log file and search for it in the deployment agent log file. Here are some common upgrade failure errors. Some of them are related to CPUs and some aren't. Pause this video and see if you can identify those that are related to CPUs. Highlighted are the correct answers. Did you get them all? And with that, our CPUs lesson comes to its end. In this lesson, we explored when CPUs should be used, the prerequisites for deploying with CPUs, the process of deploying with CPUs, we went over a few common use cases of deployment with CPUs, and we examined some basic troubleshooting principles in the CPUs deployment process. You should now be able to perform a typical deployment using CPUs. Thank you for taking this lesson, and I'll see you in our next one.